Hello and welcome to our live webinar interview with George Figaris. Uh, I'm Theo Miller, a practicing artist. We'd like to thank the LCB Depot for hosting us and our funders, the Leicester and Leicestershire Enterprise Partnership, Leicestershire County Council and the WebinArt Partners. So, hello George. Hello Theo. <laughs> um, so, could you just start off by briefly describing yourself and your practice? Sure. So um, I was born in Greece, but I've lived in England most of my life. Um, I taught for a long time, for about 30 years, and then I made a conscious decision to uh, leave teaching to pursue a career in art, which was always a plan that I had in the back of my mind. Um, my practice is about really telling stories, and I'll, I'm sure the themes will come up in our discussion, so mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. But I guess I'm a, I'm a storyteller. Okay. Um, we'll start off got some questions they might come in and out of order um, do you make work with the intention of people understanding it um, what happens if your work is not understood well you know that's a it's a big question isn't yeah. it you know um, I, I think I don't make work to be understood but I make work where there are themes that are universal so for instance I might use symbols that are particular to me mm -hmm. but somehow I try to make them accessible in some way so I will use some devices that give access into the work but some of it might be closed off mm. um, and I like this interplay between what's accessible what isn't and what people will also see in the work very often your intentions are interpreted in a different way in fact one of the most significant things I think I did in my career both teaching and uh, later on was when I was responsible for co-writing a little book, which seemed innocuous at the time, but actually became quite significant. And it was about how objects, people that make them and people that look at them, are in a triangle, if you like. And those interactions are very, very powerful. And the messages that the work carries, of course, are very unique to the, to the artist, can be culturally defined. And the person that goes up to look at the object might bring with them a whole host of things that the artist didn't anticipate. Mm -hmm. And I find that relationship really, really powerful. So I wouldn't like my work to be impossible to access, mm. but at the same time, creating an alphabet of what everything means isn't what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, often it's informed by research or kind of collaboration, which we might touch on a little bit. But do you see the, Do you consider your work as didactic, as a as a form of teaching? Obviously, you come from teaching. Do you, would you like people to kind of be influenced by your work in, in, a, in any way? I'd like people to reflect when mm -hmm. they see the work rather than teach them something. Mm. Because I think, um, I, I think it's like, it sounds like a cliche, but it's like opening a window to something. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like people to perhaps think, oh, you know, that, I hadn't considered this. Let me look at it a little bit more deeply. And the way that they will look at that will be defined by their own sets of beliefs again. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. So it's really not didactic, but it's more about giving access to things, particularly things that are in danger of being lost, mm -hmm. like histories that are forgotten, things that are perhaps neglected. Because, you know, we were having a conversation off camera earlier about curating. And the way that history is curated makes, mm -hmm. you know, is very interesting to me. Mm. The way that nations define themselves mm -hmm. by curating certain aspects of their past and letting go of other things. Mm -hmm. So not to meander too far away from the question, not didactic, more about really like um, throwing a light on something, if you like. Okay. Yeah. How do you define where that light lands? Do you, is it formed personally from your own personal histories or is it, um, is, do you come across people that you meet and you kind of collaborate with them? How does it work? Well, it often starts with a spark and, you know, a lot of people have written about where does art come from in ourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of it comes from formative experiences that we've had in our childhood. So I, I would say that the light that I shine on where I shine that light is about things that I want to investigate for myself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're universal themes like migration. You know, my family were involved in a wave of migration in the 20s. So I'm kind of interested in shining that light on a particular aspect, but really exploring it for myself. Mm -hmm. it, it's part therapeutic, part investigative, part really about finding out and reconciling yourself with a past that perhaps you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. 